<laughs> All right, we're going to call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting for February 16th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier. Oh. Mayor Mike Lowry. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. All here. I'm oh, sorry. I was writing down all here. So, <laughs> sorry. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. I'll say present. All right. Mr. Craybock. I'm here. All present. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Stan, we'll have the invocation tonight by Councilman John Craybock. Please bow your head. Now what? You Heavenly Father, we come before you. We give you thanks for this great land we, that we live in. We give you thanks for this meeting that we're allowed to have without soldiers and without worrying about you know, being killed. Heavenly Father, we, we love you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, also for having a council that is willing to stand up and sometimes speak their mind. Heavenly Father, we, we give you great thanks for our people that are overseas that are protecting us. We give you thanks for our police department and fire department. We ask for peace and show the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we'll join me. We'll do the pledge tonight the flag here behind us. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Can I have actions on the minutes? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Is that on the minutes of 119? Oh, yeah, 119. Uh, who made that motion again? Mr. Craybarker. And seconded by Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybock? Yes. Mayor Mike Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. So, Jay, we're going to need a, another motion for the second set. I move correct? we accept the regular meeting 2 1 of 16. Second. second. Oh, Did I step on your bill? Sorry. That was me. I had Mr. Lindsay oh. on that set. <laughs> correct. <laughs> Thank any, you, sir. Any discussion? <clears throat> Good job. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybock? Yes. Mayor Mike Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Communications tonight? Uh, none this evening. Uh, you can. Start off with your city manager's report, Mr. Bridge, if you may. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Uh, the first item is under a action report. Uh, the appraisal for Twin Creeks have been attached. Um, I still would like to maybe get one more appraisal in there just for pricing to see what we can compare, what we can get. Um, so that is one of the uh, first hurdles that we need to get over to uh, sell the Twin Creeks parcel. The buyer is still interested in the bulk purchase, so we're going to work that out with them. I got the last remaining deed today. I do have to go back up tomorrow for some. Um, it wasn't uh, record. It wasn't recorded before it was transferred. How it happened, I have no idea. But I will go up tomorrow and finish the process. Uh, but after tomorrow, we'll have all 27 back in possession. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to try to schedule one more appraisal. Um, if not, then I will bring the council um, my recommendation on which appraiser to go with. And then that would be the next step we have to do. Just a quick question. Just a quick question. You got one from Gun and Associates. Is that just a letter for services only? That's his quote for him to do the appraisal. Okay, that's not the appraisal of the property. It is Moomaw's appraisal of the property? Moomaw has attached the actual appraisals, but I have not. I did not include that with the fact. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> uh, just based on the letters. I think we know which one you ought to go with, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, my understanding is one's licensed and one's not. Um, the question is, do you need a licensed appraiser to do this? Um, that would be the next hurdle that we have to get to figure it out through ORC 5722. I, my suggestion to council is, is to do use a licensed appraisal. I mean, 
I wouldn't want somebody appraising my property for sale or for market and not be licensed. Because if something goes haywire, you have no recourse. Sure. That's it. Thank you, sir. Sir, sure. if that was anything, I'll be uh, informative with the council or whatever step of the way. Thank you, sir. Sure. Any other discussion on this? And moving on, our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mayor, Council, and members of the public, uh, January finance report. Total revenue that we took in for January was $285,213.94. The total expenditures for January was $291,124.78. Um, on the income tax for the general fund, we received $77,000. $412.93, and that uh, the half a percent for the police income tax brought in $26,198.23. So our total income tax collection for the month of January was $103,611.16. I did go back um, and look at our January of 2015 and we only receded in 59,000 for the month of January, and that was, of course, with just the 1% income tax, but it was still a lot lower than what we've collected this year, so we are proving that we are working very hard on our, on our collections, and we're up about 30% from this time last year. Yes, any questions on? Council, any questions? All right, thank you very much. Mr. Bridge. And moving on, uh, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. Uh, just have a couple items for discussion. I'd like to give you an update on the salt usage so far for this winter season. We've used about 80 tons of our 100 that were in the barn. Uh, we have enough to probably do one more uh, small snowstorm, but we also have 100 tons on order and will be delivered uh, any time. We just don't want to get caught with uh, an empty barn. Um, the 235 bridge painting, I have a pre-construction meeting this Thursday to attend, and I will keep everyone abreast of uh, the construction schedule as it, it becomes firm for, uh, for that project. And finally, uh, we are finalizing the edge broke overlay plans uh, for bidding with the engineer, and we should be advertising, if not this week, early next week for that job. And that is all I had to put out. I can entertain any questions. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kirko, how much is that 100 ton salt going to cost? And uh, what, how much a ton? It's right around $65 a ton. Plus or minus? I work in exact figures if it are real I close. I can't remember off the top of my head the specific amount. Um, I, I'd have to look, I'm sorry. No, half of what it cost last year. Oh, it was half last year. I paid yeah. uh, almost 140 for the load that's in the barn right now. A lot cheaper than the one. Okay. Yeah. That's That'd be around that 70. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. McLaughlin. I, I have a question about the car uh, uh, right, right across from Gales Bank from McLaughlin. And then okay. on the other side, there's one that's getting larger and larger. It's pretty deep. Is it possible to hop that shed or not? Full mm -hmm. so oh, pack. Full pack. Full pack. Full Cold. Yeah, no, no, we'll uh, definitely get on that ASAP. <laughs> if you're good, it's been growing and growing. It's right in the middle of that with people are going through. What bank's that in front of? New well, it's not the bank, it's across the street. Across the street. And that where the other business went out, that little shopping center. The old family dollar? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, <clears throat> About where you would pull in, <clears throat> maybe up a little bit. You would have One more question. Mr. Lumpy? Mr. Kiko, yes. uh, a few weeks ago, or maybe a month or so ago, uh, I asked Mr. Bridge to talk to you about some street signs. What's the process on those? Or the, are they, have those been taken care of yet, or is it going to be t spring? They, no, they, we already taken them down and been uh, replaced. Uh, already been completed. I think that's the email sent. Been a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, I didn't know it was completed yet. I hadn't been up there yet, so thank you. Mr. Kick, I just have one thing. Uh, would you mind, since we have such a large group tonight, just going over a, just a kind of broad sketch of the, the Edgebrook 
project or what we're doing and where the funds are coming from? Uh, the Edgebrook pro uh, project this year will be from Lake Avenue uh, all the way to the Circle and to Zimmerman Street. It will be a mill, uh, approximately certain areas of the road will be milled, scratched off, and we'll put about an inch and a half to two inches of new asphalt. And along with that will be some curb and gutter that is destroyed, uh, will be replaced. It's approximately a thousand linear feet of curb and gutter on that street. And then, uh, but some of those will be approach, uh, part of the approaches, so some people will get a, a new one um, in that project. Manholes, the box will be adjusted to grade. And that is it. That, that will be paid for strictly out of the street levy um, tax money that was voted on. And the project right now is estimated to be about $186. And thank you for that. If, I, if I'm right, I know it'll vary year to year, I think. The, the tax for the street levy generates around $125,000 a year, right? Give or take a little? Yeah, I think with that to the homestead, I think it averages between actually about 130 Okay. So, I, I mean, I just want to give everybody in the audience, you know, how far... 125,000 goes. It doesn't go very far for a street repair, but, you know. Thank you. I do have one more. I do have an attaboy for the city from uh, Bethel Township, one of the workers of Bethel Township that actually lives in the city. We thought she did an excellent job of putting salt down and getting the streets clean and so forth. This last little snow. Absolutely. Absolutely. actually came to me and said, great job. I, I do want to put out a lot of people don't. Uh, we plow every street once we get it two inches, but salting is salting main drags. We salt all intersections, uh, but we don't salt in between intersections. For instance, scale wood between Scott intersection and the Kennison intersection. Uh, it tracks it, and it really saves us significantly on salt usage. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Thank you, Howie. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with the city manager's report, our fire discussion with the fire chief, Chief Presti. January, the division responded to 103 EMS calls in the city, 19 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to fire, nine fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. 
We had three EMS calls that were mutilated out to Pike Township or Bethel Park Township uh, due to our medic already being on a response. As of January 31st, all of the new employees have completed orientation and are assigned to the part-time program. <clears throat> During January, also completed 100% of our protocol testing from the EMS side of the house of our personnel that are not uh, already working for the 2448 department where they get that there. Uh, our personnel that we had to test in-house, we had a 100% pass rate, which is a good, uh, shows good on us a lot. Uh, we also received this month a re EMS grant uh, that we're going to be able to use uh, on the educational side of the house for EMS to send a couple of our people to EMT school, plus also send two of our personnel to CPR instructor school. Um, we have purchased the new air, or not purchased, we've got the new air compressor. It is in the station. We found out today that what we had budgeted to uh, install and uh, get the compressor up and running is going to be well more than enough. We will come under under budget with that without any problem. Um, we purchased, or we're purchasing the Life Pack 15. Uh, we're purchasing one for the city. It was ordered today. The one for the Elizabeth Township Medic was also purchased by Elizabeth Township, not from the city. They're taking care of that. Uh, as of the month, <coughs> we also have hired one more firefighter paramedic, and we're looking at hiring one more firefighter paramedic in EMT that's putting in applications. We continue to receive on approximately about three or four applications per month from different personnel. We've uh, been receiving a lot from the, from the area from uh, Bethel Park area, uh, fire, fire, fire department there. Some of the people are crossing over and working both departments with us. Uh, Pike Township also. So we're still getting, like I said, anywhere from three to five applications per month. Um, I was also asked to address uh, this month the battalion uh, program. Battalion is a, for the public doesn't know, Battalion 52 is a call sign plus also a vehicle. It's a Dodge pickup truck, which is also equipped with uh, everything that an incident commander needs to run a uh, fire or EMS or hazmat incident or any type of incident. It also has life-saving equipment on board. It has an AED and a first in bag. The way the battalion program works, all of our officers are required to pull battalion duties, which means they must pull anywhere from 12 to 24 hours a month on the battalion program. The battalion program is not a paid, uh, in other words, if they're there for 12 hours, they're not getting paid for 12 hours. They're only getting paid when they go on a call. Uh, they get two hours of pay, basically for being on the battalion, two hours for every 12. Uh, they get a, their regular pay, whatever their hourly pay is, whatever their rank is, whatever their uh, normal hourly wage is. The, to be on the battalion, to ride Battalion 52, not only do they have to be an officer, they also have to meet other requirements, which they must, they must have ICS 300 and 400, which is command, uh, instant command school, which gives them the abilities and the knowledge to run, a, run a, any type of scene. Um, the battalion program, the, the benefits that it gives the, the citizens in the division is the fact that as a third person on a medic run, if they need a hand, if they need another set of hands, or if they need some, uh, someone to drive that rig with two people in the back working the patient. The other advantage is that while medic one is on a response, transporting to the hospital, we get a second run, medic run, that battalion officer can meet up with someone else and take that second run. In the past two months, medic two has taken probably anywhere from five to six runs with the battalion officer meeting up with either Captain Geiselman or another person that's available at that time will get on the radio and say they're responding to the station and they'll pick up with it. Uh, the battalion is not just EMS though, it's EMS and fire both. Like I said, with the, with the equipment that's on board that, of that battalion, even if the med, that they don't have a chance to pick up a second person and run medic two for the call, they can go as a first responder. They get inside the house, that person's in full arrest. That, that battalion person can put an AED on the person if, they can, if they're in a shockable rhythm, you can bring them back, shock, try to shock them and bring them back. You also have a first in bag. If that person's having a diabetic problem, 
and they're uh, conscious enough to give oral glucose, they can do that for them. They can at least get a set of vitals, they can at least try to stabilize the patient while the mutual aid medic's on the way. And they can also give the mutual aid medic a heads up, okay, this is what your patient is, this is what's going on. That way that medic crew knows what to, what to expect when they get there. On a fire ground operation, they're a third person on that, on that crew. Doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna take command and stay in command. It means that they're there, they get that command vehicle there, they're a third person on that crew, they can go ahead and fire fire if they need to. If they don't, they got enough personnel to stay in command, they can stay in command until one of the chief officers are on scene. At that time, the chief officer can make his decision whether he wants to take the command from the battalion or if he wants to uh, let them retain command, depending on what the incident is. Um, like I said, it's, it's a very useful tool for the division. It's a very useful tool for the city. It does a lot of different things besides, you know, between the medical calls, between the fire calls. It also uh, can, during the day or any, at any time, if, say, Elizabeth Township crew needs equipment or they need to bring equipment from ET into the city, instead of taking one of those two medics out of their response area, that battalion can, can take care of those runs. And it keeps both medics just, uh, for a fact, last night I was the battalion officer. I had to run some equipment out to Elizabeth Township. If I wouldn't have been there and the medic would have had to do it, by the time the medic would have got to Elizabeth Township, the city was punched out for, uh, for a cardiac crime. It, that way that medic was already here, it was still in the city, and able to front respond right away. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? <coughs> Mr. Reynolds. All right, I, I have two responses and a question. Uh, I definitely appreciate having the EMS calls that were mutual aided, because I know last year we'd asked that question and we'd get an I don't know, so I definitely appreciate that. Uh, and then uh, the Lucas tool, have we moved forward with that at all? Have the Lucas tool right now is uh, one Lucas tool is a in between thirteen to $15,000 piece of equipment. We're looking hopefully for a grant for that. Plus also I got a phone call this week which thrilled me to death. The uh, Church of the Brethren in the city during Lent is having a fundraiser for the fire department all through Lent. Um, will they be able to raise enough to buy Lucas tool? I don't know, but whatever they do raise will go into the fund for the Lucas tool. Fantastic. Uh, in April, Workman's Comp will be opening their grant fund, and they have certain equipment that's earmarked for their grants, which one of those uh, pieces is a uh, Lucas tool, and the other one is a self-loading cot for the medics. Great, because I know you were talking about possibly getting a grant for it, so right. definitely supportive of it and think it's something we definitely need because it frees up you guys, you know. A Lucas obviously. tool can free up more than one person because if you've never done CPR on somebody, you're going to, you're going to do effective CPR for about five minutes. Do you, do you, you mind sharing out. what a Lucas tool is? So these people a Lucas tool is a piece of equipment that's been, been designed, it's battery operated, it runs on battery. The bottom part of it slides under the patient's back, the top part uh, clamps over the top of them. It has a plunger in the middle that sits, that goes down into their chest. It started, it does CPR for, uh, on its own. It's strapped to the patient. You can leave it on the whole time as you're going to the hospital. It frees up uh, that medic or that EMT. From, instead of having to stand there doing chest compressions, they can be doing intubation, start an IV line, giving uh, cardiac drugs, that type of thing, getting the patient ready to be packaged. And then on safety factor for the firefighter and the medics, in the back of an ambulance, otherwise, right now, the way we're having to do it right now is we're having to do CPR going down the road. That means you're standing up in the back of the moving medic trying to do C uh, effective CPR on a patient, which is very hard to do and dangerous. But we have no other choice. With the Lucas tool, that takes that safety factor out. So it's, it's a very useful tool. It's the, um, several of the surrounding departments uh, have them already, and they've already had several saves using the Lucas tool because it does constant perfect CPR for you. All right, thank you. My last one is, uh, when will we start up with training in the spring? Because I know well, we, we which, which side, fire or EMS? Fire, fire side, because I know we had talked about it, and you know, uh, I think something council all should attend, you know, to go at, see what you guys go through and be supportive of our local fire, fire personnel. At this time, Captain uh, Stitzel has already started his, his training program. Uh, we're looking at a level one school. Uh, probably will start in April. Maybe, maybe May. Uh, level one is the first level that a firefighter has to make. 
Uh, again, we are using what's available in the area instead of having to outsource. Uh, working along with Bethel Miami Fire Department, uh, they're probably going to be the host department for the level one and uh, opening it up to everybody around and we'll be trying to run that, plus our own in-house training. Plus in June, we're looking at bringing a fire officer one uh, course to the, to the department, which will also be opened up to the other departments as well. Uh, this, this will give all of our line officers their first officer school if they, if they do not have it, and they'll be the first ones to go to it uh, from probably most of the departments. That's where they're gonna look at sending them. Uh, our EMS training is ongoing always. Uh, and it's every month. Plus we're also looking into what's called CE Solutions. It's an online program, um, mainly looking at it for our uh, pay-for-call volunteer and part-time paid people that are not uh, currently working 2448 or full-time department, because uh, they get most of their uh, continuing ed there. Uh, what this advantage will give our people is the fact that they can go online from home and do uh, online courses, CE courses, CEU courses, that will give them their credit hours that they need to recertify every three years. Fantastic. I have no further questions. Thank you. Mr. Lauer. A couple of things. Yes, sir. Um, and this is determined to tag it. Yes, sir. Many leave the fire department there is called, let's say, it's heart attack in the fire. Okay. Yes, sir. So many probably leave the correct me if I'm wrong, with a driver and two people in the back? No, one. There's one? Okay. Only two people on the crew. Okay, two people on the crew. Okay. Um, would it be necessary for that exact call? For battalion 52 to go on there. Yes, sir. Okay, tell me more. For, for uh, on a cardiac call? Yeah, on a cardiac. And I'm uh, just on trying a cardiac to understand. call, that battalion can get there. He can he can assist that medic. They get there, even if the the person's conscious. Okay. If that person's having a cardiac event, they're going to need to get that person loaded into the medic, get on get them on a monitor, get a 12 lead EKG done on them before they ever move the patient, get them on O2, get a line established because the paramedic can't give any drugs that patient for cardiac until they have a line established. So with that, with that third person, even if it's just a simple fact, okay, let's get a 12 lead going, let's get a line started, okay, a battalion, go ahead and get us going, drive us. He's gonna lock up that battalion, leave it, leave it at the scene, jump in the driver's seat and drive, that, drive the uh, medic to the hospital. That gives those two people in the back time to get that line started, get an O2, uh, O2 established, get a 12 lead read, read so that way that paramedic knows what's going on with the patient's heart before they give them any drugs. Insurance. It's insurance. They have yeah. a person there. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, no, please go ahead. Mr. Lindsay. No, you may have my question. Uh, Chief, yes, sir. Uh, I have a couple of three questions for you. Uh, a couple of them's on cost. The new air uh, compressor and cascade system for the yes, fire sir. department. Yes, sir. What was the cost on that? Zero. Was that donated? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the life pack, what is the cost on that, or was it donated also? No, that, that we got out of our budget. <laughs> I wish. That uh, cost was at $22,000, a little, little over $22,000. And that was a savings because of a, of a uh, buyback program with the company that we brought, brought the new life pack through. Uh, we got a right at a $7,000 discount on the, on the life pack. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth Township, when medic, or, uh, Battalion 52 runs from here to Elizabeth Township, who yes, pays sir. for that? Who pays for that? Uh, that? That one is basically under, still under us because he's on, on our battalion, he's on our, on our call. Okay, uh, then why would he go to Elizabeth Township if they're not paying Same for thing that? Same thing as backing up our people. He's because backing up also, our people? It, 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 Excuse me? He's backing up our people or their people? Our people. Our people? Our people run that okay. station. And plus also, too, when he's going there, he's going basically as a mutual aid. He's going as mutual aid. Yes. It'd be the same way if Engine 3 or Medic 3 comes into the city for a response, they are mutual aid. If okay. we go from the city into the Elizabeth Township, we're going as a mutual aid. Your IV uh, starts. Battalion 52 does them? Excuse me, sir. Battalion 52 does your IV starts for the medic, like on a cardiac or they can if something? They're a paramedic. That, if they're a paramedic. Yes, sir. Uh, do they have to be a paramedic to run 52 or just no. a, uh, an officer? No, they have to be an officer. They have to be. Um, my goal is 
that they would be all at least EMT certified. Uh, right now, I have two that are not that are that are going to be going to school. Okay. Uh, even if they're not, though, even say they're not <coughs> EMT certified, every firefighter is CPR at least CPR first aid certified. Right. As a person, as a CPR certified, you can use an AED, mm -hmm. and you can put that AED on that person and, and uh, uh, defibrillate them and bring them back. And I know you probably already answered this, but the AED is in Battalion 52? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, house burns, do you ever do any house burns for training? Very far and few in between because of EPA laws and regulations. It's very hard to get the EPA to agree to it okay. uh, due to the fact you have to have everything stripped out of the home. You have mm -hmm. to have all the shingles and everything off the roof. Yeah, there's a, there's a really a lot goes into it. Wow. If, if we get, if you get one, it's rare and far and few in between. Okay. Uh, what we've been doing as far as we're doing live burns for our personnel when we, when we uh, want to, uh, we have a very good working relationship with Wright Patter Force Base. They Use have a tower. burn tower yeah. with a Class A burn uh, floor on the first floor, mm -hmm. and we can take our people there and do burns there. Okay, thank you, sir. And I, I want to make one more comment. Uh, congratulations on uh, increasing the numbers of the fire department and medic. It, uh, it's amazing that you haven't been here a year yet, and you've already brought in, what, 10, 15 people? I mean, I don't know the exact number, but I think, I think that's outstanding. Uh, keep up the good work, and uh, again, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, uh, Chief, I'm, um, I had a question, sort of a follow-up to what Mr. Lindsay asked. Uh, as you probably know, I'm sure you know, there was a, a large structure fire in Old North Dayton today. This was a warehouse, multi-story, caught on fire, and it was in a, a generally a residential neighborhood. Uh, we have sort of um, a, a similar thing here. We've got a lot of multi-structured uh, story buildings downtown, um, a lot of uh, tool and die and factory industry on the outside of town, and a lot of silos. As far as preparedness goes with the controlled burn, I was wondering if you could comment on um, our ability to handle a large structure fire such as what happened in Old North Dayton. Um, are we ready to take care of that sort of thing, and are we capable to handle a fire of that nature? Fire of that nature, it would be a, con a combination between us and mutual aid package with the surrounding departments. Any structure fire like that, we have an automatic mutual aid response. Uh, it would be automatically mutual aid from uh, Bethel Park, Pike Township. Uh, in anything large like that, you're going to automatically call for whatever resources that you can, that you know, which we have enough resources in the area between um, Bethel Park, Pike. Uh, we also have uh, Cast Down, Fletcher, and Closer even, we have larger departments that we can call on. Uh, Huber Heights Fire Department, uh, Wright Pat Fire Department, they have a, a 100-foot aerial truck. Uh, Huber has aerial. Um, that's where our command officers and our command officers know that that's their first thought when you have a large structure like that. What, any good officer's not looking at, it, at the, what the fire is doing now, he's looking at what it's gonna be 10 minutes from now and calling for what he's gonna need. Again, with our, with our city, the way our city's set up, it's, it's great having the aerial ladders, uh, having them come in, but then you have to know where to set them, where to put them up, and how to use them. So that, that plays heavily into the training aspect, because you're yes, training with these other departments, you're making those relationships, there's yes, that interoperability, and at the same time, training to know, like you said, uh, not, you know, was it knowing 10 minutes ahead of time? Can you repeat that about knowing what's happening in the future? Any, uh, as a firefighter, even your basic fire school, you learn how to read smoke and read building and building construction. What is that building going to do? What's the fire going to do to that building? How much, how much time do I got if, if I've got flame impingement on, say, 30% of, of the structure? Uh, in our area, we had the fitness center. The front part of the fitness center was an old brainer, which is a bowstring construction. If I have heavy flame, flame impingement in that, in that area of the building, I'm not sending anybody inside. Because once that roof goes, it's going to go as a, as a, like a domino effect. Once one part of that roof falls, it's going to continue to fall. Uh, so that command officer, whoever's in charge, has to be able to read the building, read the smoke, knows building construction, and be able to decide, okay, it's a, it's a saveable or it's not a saveable. Any other questions? Thanks for the report, Chief, and again, congratulations to the two lieutenants. Uh, keep up the great work, and congratulations again. Mr. Bridge. Sure. And thank you, Chief Trustee. And moving on in the city manager report, our police discussion with our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, citizens. In January, reports taken by Newfoundland deputies, we had 27. By Clark County deputies, there was also 27. 
which is a total of 54. The control of 1,777 miles answered 82 miscellaneous calls and had 12 follow-up investigations. Under traffic information, traffic stops, there was 53, and out of that, 15 citations were referenced. We had 01 VI, 01 OVI arrest with one charge. We had one parking citation, uh, no abandoned vehicle tows. Uh, we did do two non injury accidents and one injury accident. Under arrest information, criminal adult arrest over seven. Charges with that were two. Criminal juvenile arrest charges, there were none. Warrant arrest there were eight. That's part of that seven that's up top there. And that time we filed no warrants. Under special interest, uh, for January we had no assaults, one breaking and entering, seven thefts, no vandalism, two 911 hang ups, and uh, zero phone harassments. Domestic violence was an assault, there were none. Domestic violence ver verbal, we had five. Lockouts, we had one. Peace officers, one. Alarms, one. And we assisted 12 times. In February, Nico Lyons became the third deputy train uh, and is working in New Carolina. The fourth deputy will be Jeff Boswell, and he is in training and will be ready to patrol in just a little over a month. So we'll be back up to four by then. And it says in March, when Deputy Boswell joins the New Carolina, that will bring the number of deputies back up to four. And even with four deputies, we still need your eyes and ears to report emergencies and crime. Um, I want to encourage all the citizens of New Carolina uh, to stop, uh, meet the new deputies, talk to them, and get to know them. And if you have a concern, let the deputies know about it. Um, they're the ones out on patrol, so report what you see to them. And if you do see a crime, please report it. A lot of people don't want to be involved in the court report of crime. We can't stop it if we don't know about it. So currently, I'm pleased with the people we have working. Um, they're doing a great job. We hope to get our fourth one out and, and get back on our feet again. So that concludes my report. Council, any questions? Mr. Reynolds. I have one question. <clears throat> uh, sorry, John, would assist. Uh, is that to other depart uh, other deputies in, let's say, like Bethel Township or Pike? Yes. Okay, just wondering. Just want to make sure. And how, like, on average, is 12 pretty low, pretty high? Yeah, that's about average. About average. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I, I, I know everyone sees all the time. Oh, I see our deputies more mm -hmm. at Park Lane than I see them very well. So <coughs> I, I think they might need glasses, but uh, <laughs> I see them all the time every part of <laughs> Councilor, any other questions? Mr. McLaughlin. I do have one. Sergeant, uh, traffic stops and citations issue. Uh, 53 stops and only 15 citations. That seems to be a little out of kilter. And it is somewhat. Um, I have spoken with deputies. Um, the stops at their discretion, and uh, they're stopping people looking for uh, maybe crime has taken place of drugs, um, but they're also new, and I'm sure that number will generate a little higher as springtime comes in. Maybe they're giving warnings. Yes. Good. Uh, we're, we're good. Actually, the last couple months, they gave a lot of warnings. So if you get a side of each, you're on the ball. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Sergeant Underwood. Uh, would it be possible in your reports to to list uh, how many warnings they give and how many we uh, speeding tickets they give? Would that be a possibility? Uh, yes, sir. It looks like they gave uh, out of 53 stops, they they issued 15, and the rest were warnings. We was, don't was the fifth, write, was we don't actually write the warning citation. Okay. Okay. It's verbal. But it's, it's verbal. And that's a good way to document it. So, I, so all the citations was for speed. No, sir. There's different citations. Um, I can break that down if you like to. If if we could, if, I mean, if it isn't too hard for you to do that, I mean, I don't know. No, we. I have that information available. So. Okay. 
So you, what you want is? I, I would like to how many stops. Well, if we have the stops, I like to how many citations they write for speeding. Okay. And how many warnings they give, if they give any for speeding. I can tell you about. So we have we have about three roads that thinks a racetrack around here in town. And honestly, every time you give us a road patrol, uh, we're out there. I mean, we can't be on it all the time. Oh, I understand. We're out there and make some stops. We've also been on a couple of roads where we have been told it's uh, high volume of traffic and the speed. And in a couple of days, we can't stop one, one car. Right. So it could be because we're there and over there or many other reasons. Uh, just a, as an approximate answer, I would say six to seven of those citations were speeding. For speed? Okay. You've got to remember, it's been kind of hard to speed here in the last <laughs> Well, And if you are, well, this is <laughs> they, should, they, they, they need a ticket. Uh, for, I noticed on your spatial interest, so you have peace officers uh, calls. Can you explain mostly to the public and for our uh, YouTube audience what the peace officers Really, what do they do? Oh, we might have a, a conflict with the neighbor. Um, we might have uh, someone standing by uh, for child custody. That's a peace officer call. Those are pretty common. Mm -hmm. And we're one of the only agencies around that does that. But if mom and dad or boys and girlfriend aren't getting along, we want to move the child. To, Whoever has custody, they want us there, we make every effort to be there. Uh, something in generally that, that people feel that they might need a policeman there is what a police officer calls it. Not necessarily is a crime taking place or going to be. It's just something's wrong, they want us to be there to make sure it doesn't go and be criminal. Okay, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Council, any other questions? Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. I appreciate the report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on under informational items. Um, the first item under informational is the 2016 pool season. We need a council to make a, mo a motion to open or close the pool this season. So I will give the floor to City Council. I would move that we open the pool this year, please. I'll, I'll second that. <clears throat> the reason that I would move to open the pool is we had said last year, if you ever said, depending on how much money the pool lost, uh, it would depend on what we lost. We lost under $5,000 last year. The year before that was $40,000. If we would have lost thirty dollars or $40,000, I would not be in favor of opening it. Uh, we have put out on Facebook, two, two or three people have, I personally talked to, I bet, 30 or 40 or 50 people, and the people are saying, what else do our children have to do? So consequently, I'm in favor if we keep it to that type of a loss, which is less than a dollar per citizen in the city of New Palau, it's well worth having to have something for our children and our young people and our seniors to do. So that's the reason that I'm doing the motion to open the polls. I also am for opening the pool. Um, you said, well, I'm afraid the children won't have any place to go. Anything to do, they'll get in trouble. I would like to see the skate park go away, but that's one other issue. But I do have something that I'd like to talk about. It was on Facebook. You know, sad how many of you started. It's on there right now that the city of Aiken wants to take over the pool, but that's not true. Someone put on Facebook, okay, on February 9th at 9.07. I think they got that confused because of the pool management company. Right. right, exactly. But anyway, February 11th. They want close to $70,000 to run the pool. Is that a good use of taxpayer dollars? That was never seen. That was never seen. I mean, we did it the same year. Okay. I did it. at 60, and it was dropped to 50, okay? So, but anyway, that's just the interpretation of the thing. We should not do that, okay? But, however, with all that being said, okay, we went through the budget. 
Mike was my son, you did a heck of a job, but we're not sure what's going to happen next year. You people did a heck of a job. There's a lot of volunteers who did a heck of a job. We cannot and should not spend $55 a year for that food. That's what bothers me. I would like to see the allocation in the budget to say $15,000. Allocate $15,000 if we start showing that we are moving anywhere near $10,000. So you want to invest money to open the pool and then possibly close it middle of the season? If, not if it money? gets to where we think we're going to lose that kind of money, we have to show it. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Okay, now if I'm wrong and I'm missing something, please enlighten me. Okay, what I'm saying is people are looking at that, okay, and saying, okay, they're going to spend 50, 60,000 dollars on the pool. Mm -hmm. and we don't plan on doing that. If they did it last year for 4000 in a bad year for 5000 I'm sorry. I'm sure with all the help, but I'm seeing everybody saying they're going to do it. We can get the same thing to be done for that or less. Okay. You understand where I'm coming from? I do. Uh, before we go any further, I'm going to give the city manager's opinion on this. Just play devil's advocate. Um, the you city, know, that's fine. I understand. It has okay. nothing to do with what I want or what I personally okay. want. Again, I talked to Mr. Mayor, I talked to Mr. McLaughlin about this. I would not be doing my due diligence as a city manager if both sides of the fence were not given. Okay. okay, that being said, the city does not have the money to open that pool. It may look like there's a positive balance on there, 169 in our general fund. If one big thing breaks at our wastewater plant with an ending balance of 35000 or in our water department that has a $7,000 ending balance, the general fund's going to pay for that money. I mean, pay for that repair. You know, we have Bell Manor coming up in less than probably a year and a half to two years. We have set aside only $10,000 for this year to make that move. Um, and I understand it is a community thing that you want people to go and enjoy, and I'm all for that. The budget is not financially healthy enough to, uh, for that pool, given all the unknowns. Um, we will do what council directs us to do. It is my job as a city manager to make that recommendation if it's open or not. My recommendation is not to open it, strictly based off the financials and the fact that there's too many what ifs out there. There's too many unknowns. You know, it may have only lost 5,300 last year, but it lost significant amount prior to that. Comparing last year to years before that is not an honest comparison because the years prior, it was open all the time. Last year was a very limited schedule. So again, I understand, I understand both sides of the fence, but at the same time, I'm here to protect the city's financial. And right now, it's not there. We just, it's there, but it's not there. One major <coughs> problem in any of our city departments, the general fund's got to supplement that. Mr. Lindsay. Oh, hot topic. It is. Uh, Ms. Harris, can you tell us how much the pool has lost in the last five years? I get that information to you. I don't have it off the top of my head. Can you give me a ballpark? Can I give you a ballpark? Um, I'm good with a ballpark. Give me a minute. Let me see. I've got a few years here. We, we know it's, we're at about $45,000 right now, so that takes care of last year and the year before. The previous two years, is it another thirty or $40,000 that we lost? Or? Okay. Swimming pool. Well, we, you talked about last year. So the general fund transferred in. Let's see, we put 10000 in, but we had 4000 left. 4600 and something, yeah. I believe. There was a lot of things that weren't touched in that budget. Right. Okay, expenditure-wise, chemical-wise, there's things that just kind of rode through. 2014, <clears throat> the general fund transferred $66,000 in to supplement that pool. Um, 2013, there wasn't any general fund money going in. That's why we had the extra in 2000. 14 to cover, and it had a negative $27,000 starting out in 2014. So basically, it, it's lost every year from the records that I have in front of me, which go back to 2012. It's always been supplemented by the general fund. So in the figures you just gave us, we're, we're looking at $100,000 plus that we've lost in say, the last four years. I think that's what you gave me, is the four years. Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't that much. 
We transferred we lost 10, 80 60, and 40. That's 120. 76,000. Huh? About 76,000 from 2012. From 2012. Has been transferred in from the general fund to help settlement. Maybe I misunderstood something. I thought you said three years ago it lost seventy thousand dollars. No, we transferred sixty six thousand in in two thousand fourteen. We transferred nothing in in two thousand thirteen. We transferred ten thousand last year. So that's seventy six and in two thousand twelve there's a thousand. So sixty six and twelve and one. Pardon me, sir? Sixty six, twelve and one. So seventy eight, eighty, eighty one thousand dollars. And the 40000 from two years ago. No, that's included in the figure. I just told you. It's included in I'm the 66. I'm sorry, we're not. 66 with the 40. It's in oh, the 66. Okay. So okay. 66 helped. There was no money transferred in in 2013. Okay, well, I was adding the 66 plus the 45. So if you count that as a loss, two years. whatever the general fund puts in the supplement, right. basically what you is can a, say is a loss. Is a loss. It's not to the exact penny unless I break it down for you, right. but that's how much the general fund supplements. So that's how much it needed. The uh, comment on Mr. Larry, I, I like what he said about the 15000 but what is the chlorine cost for the year for that pool? I, it may be close to that $15,000 mark. I wouldn't suggest putting only 15000 in there. You're just asking for us to come right back in front of you and ask for more appropriations. If it's $50,000 in there now and it doesn't use it, it's going to go unused. Um, just because there's 50, it's the same thing with the lawyer fees that were requested mm -hmm. during the budget work session. Just because there's 85,000 in there doesn't mean 85 is going to be used. You know, um, my understanding of a lot of repairs were not done last year. We didn't really need to do any. a lot. And also, to continue on playing that devil's advocate, when we did meet the Dayton Pool Management Company, and I was shocked, and I think the mayor was shocked too, to hear this, the pool structure not in bad shape. It's actually in decent shape. So that was a learning experience for myself. Um, so that's definitely a pro with it. So we're not really just throwing money into something that we know we're gonna, my assumption of it, that thing was gonna break apart in two years. But it's a solid hole, but solid. So that's a positive. I, 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 I kind of, I think, along with Rick's thinking, I thought 15,000 was a little low myself, but if this pool opens, I think we need to stay on top of what it's spending. And at some point, we have to say it, we can't go no further in the hole. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the council thinks. I know, I know Mike worked his backside off to get it down to losing the 5,300, whatever it was. Uh, and I appreciate that. The community appreciates it. I myself don't use the pool. I'm looking at it strictly from a financial standpoint and how much money can this city afford to lose on the pool? I mean, we all have to ask, I can't afford to lose that kind of money in my personal finances in a summer. I would be, I would, I would be dead because I'd have a heart attack. But, <laughs> but I mean, that's something I think council has to, has to look at. I'm good, thank you. Mr. Rip, let's just go down the line. All right, sorry, okay. <laughs> all right. sorry about that, Bill. Uh, I used the pool all the time when I was a child. I mean, I think Valerie saw me there pretty much every day. I was quite tan. I'm very pale now. Obviously, I don't use it that much anymore. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I understand where Mr. Bridge is coming from. It's very hard. We're in a very, very tough bind. I think that... Uh, we have to make tough choices, and I'm afraid that you know we didn't make we didn't lose as much, but we did lose money. And I think all of us made the promise that if we lost money, period, we would close it down. No, no, I can, disagree. With actually, you I have a quote from you if you want it. No, I you, said, want, you want it your quote? It depends on how on. much we lose. No, no, well, I have the floor, so you can yield. But uh, sorry, <laughs> but the point is, we all said multiple times. Now you didn't. Now I'll, I'll be honest. Mike said if we can get it low. Mike didn't say it, but most of us have said we would close it if we lost anything. No. And, well, you can go back and watch the video if you want to. Uh, but I, well, I've always been a proponent, though, of if, so we <coughs> stop losing 50000 not losing, I shouldn't say losing, we spend 50000 to keep it running, and then we lose five and we transfer more money in. I've always said, you know, I've advocated, let's do levy. Let's stop being 
reactive, let's be proactive. Let's put a levy on and let the citizens decide if they want the pool. And if Facebook has anything to do about it, it will pass. <laughs> I mean, it will pass. Uh, but let people, everybody, and the citizens in the community put, put up for it, you know? I mean, that's just how it works for me. I think that we can't afford it. And I think if we want to, if we want to keep it, let's put a levy up and let's let the citizen decide if they want it. I mean, if the mills can't be that high, or, I mean, I want to think, and I think everyone agrees that the, that everyone loves the pool. I mean, that's like I spent hundreds of hours there as a child, and I very much so enjoyed it. Uh, but I think that we should be proactive and put a levy on before we and see if it passes and let this community decide. So, and that's that's my only quote on it, and I yield back. So. Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, this is one of those contentious issues. Um, Everybody's bringing up different ideas on how to solve the whole problem. Um, I, again, I, I have to say that one of the neatest things that I've seen is last year or two years ago when we lost like 40,000 and our pool manager came with a number of action items on how to make the pool run more efficiently and we implemented those and because of her, her work and, and thinking of those and because of the work of, of our current mayor, we were able to bring it down to losing about 5,000. Yeah, we're still losing money. Um, a lot of different items, a lot of different issues, ways to fix it have uh, come up. Um, I've been talking to a few citizens so since this has been going on in, in the discussion. I've been talking to a few citizens and there's a number, there's, there's a couple issues that have come up. Um, one is different fundraising options and another one is implementing something like a swim team or a swim club. And I've been working with these, these uh, residents and uh, we're, we're going to be starting some of these fundraising initiatives and starting the swim club, <coughs> seeing what we can get going as another way to raise money. Because if we're anything close to that 5000 maybe with a little extra elbow grease, we can get up to that point. Um, just want to add my two cents in. We're so close to breaking even. Not a lot of the stuff that we do as a city, as a government, makes a lot of money anyway. Um, but it's a real great asset for the community. And I want to thank all the residents who uh, decide to step up and, and want to help out and make the, the pool go. And um, I think we can give it another shot. I'm willing to at least. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, I'll just keep going down the line. My two cents on the pool is uh, we've heard a lot of a lot of uh, comments and, and suggestions online on Facebook and, and here on council. And you know, what makes a city a city other than, you know, its citizens and its, and its governed body? I mean, you don't have a city without the things that are within it as far as the services it's offered. Now, I'm not saying if the pool is 50000 we should keep offering it to the, the citizens because it's a service. I mean, I agree with what Lowell said and you know, someone else had said. If it starts losing, you know, large amounts of money, it needs to be closed. I mean, that's just not very smart. But, you know, the city is made up of the services is which, what makes it a city, whether it's trash pickup, snow plowing, solving the roads, the eight or nine parks that we have that do not make any money for the city. Not a one of them, but no one's here saying, close all your parks. Uh, I, I know that a small park is still a little bit different than a pool, but that we still lose money on these types of things. Um, you know, I think with a little work, and, and it showed it last year, all the kids that, that did a great job at the pool, the manager, uh, you know, I think if we can keep that trend going, I don't, I don't see why we couldn't open the pool again. Randy, I'm going to ask you a hard question. Sure. This, is, I mean, this revolves on something that's going to happen tonight also. You ask, and, and you're, this is not a tactic, it's just a straight up fair question. You, you say that you know you can't, as a city manager, say open the pool because it lost five thousand. Not which, and it's lost more in the past. As a city manager, with our finances the way they are, can you also honestly ask for two raises tonight? Absolutely. I have two people here who come to work every day and work 40, 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And go ahead and answer real quick. I'm, I'm not knocking their, their no, work. No, I understand I, they, that. They do yeah, great they're, work. They're two totally different things. Right. They're totally different things. One, your pool's an enterprise fund. The pool is not. Um, second, every one of the citizens in this town, whether they come to the city or they're not, for the services of these two people. Right. Second off, again, back to my original point, they have went out without raising for years. Our hour employees get a raise every year, no matter the city budget, because they're unionized. Ms. Harris probably puts in 65 to 70 hours a week. The budget's not what it is because the levy passed. It has a lot to do with it. I'm doing three jobs. Ms. Harris is doing multiple jobs. I get the pleasure of taking my work home every evening on a laptop. Ms. Harris cannot. She can't pick up her software and take it home. 
So yes, I can justify that because that is not even to me it's not even a equal. Apple, Apple yeah, yeah, just because they're they're just it doesn't make sense in my head to try to control it. Okay, thank you. And then my other statement slash question is, you know, I, I think there's going to be some, I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. assuming there's going to be some people that may vote no for this tonight. I, I don't know what, what it will turn out. But my other problem is if someone votes to close, if they vote to close the pool, if we vote to close the pool, what's that person's plan to do with that bill? We've been grilled numerous times from Madison Street School, which is a lot bigger building, but the pool is a lot closer to downtown New Carlisle. Uh, it's going to sit and it's still going to cost us money to insure it. It's still going to cost us money to cut the grass. And it's going to cost us to go down there and board up windows when they get broken. It's going to cost us if someone hops a fence or gets through and you know breaks their leg in the deep end while they're trying to skateboard at midnight or who knows what else. So my other argument is, is I understand that if, if you want to close it, I understand that. But I'm asking if anybody that votes no needs to have a solid plan what to do with that building after they close it? What's it going to cost to maintain it and to tear it down and fill it in? Because that's not going to come cheap either. I just don't think that plan is going to be made available in the next five to ten minutes. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm not saying the vote to open or close. Right, it. but I'm I'm saying that that needs to be in their head. With yeah, I know it's not going to be tonight or even tomorrow or even a month or so, but it needs to be followed because that is going to be another undertaking. And I personally don't want to be saying you know set up here with citizens saying, okay, now you got Madison Street, you didn't learn your lesson with that one, and now you've got another one. So. But that's my two cents. Let's let's finish down the line. Mr. My turn. Mr. Okay. Trey Thank you. <clears throat> um, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media is how people communicate now. Unfortunately, you know, even in the presidential ele election, you start hearing about Facebook, and we got Twitter questions, and we got all that stuff. So that's something that this, we just have to deliver. Um, you know, and I like Facebook. One way I communicate with knowing what people out there, what they're thinking, or what they're hiding, or whatever. You know, um, and you know what I said on Facebook, you know, anybody's been following it, you know, I think I'm fairly I'm really honest. I tell them exactly what it is. I don't soft soak it, I don't do anything. This is what happens. Now, the, the idea, and, and I, I posted this too, is that when people tell me that there's nothing for kids to do, I have a problem with that. Because, and the reason I have a problem with that, because in the summertime when they're out of school, a lot of them are sitting home doing video games until the parents get home at five or six, then what do they do? Yeah. And the pool closes 6.30, 7 o'clock. Okay, 8. Okay, close at 8. And your, and your busy time is... Um, what time is your busy time? Between 1 and 4. Then they're going home to have dinner. Okay. So, you know, I still have a problem because I know my kids, they play baseball, they play... They, I mean, they don't play baseball anymore. <clears throat> you know, they got football, they got basketball. They, my, that's what my kids have done. And I, I go over to Smith Park and I do see that. However, we did use the pool when I first came here some years ago. Use it uh, every day. Met my wife there every day. You know, for 20 years. So now saying that, you know, so I don't buy that argument. However, losing you know five thousand in a business nowadays is not too too hateful, you know. And, and, I, and I appreciate. I already said management, you know, got a lot better, you know, because I look at the numbers, I look at hours, I look at all that stuff, and you know, I think you guys did a really good job in bringing it down. And I suggested a barbecue. Mike thinks a barbecue would be great around the shelter house. I thought it was good too. Mm -hmm. so. And I like ideas like that. So um, I think there's possibilities. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I think there's I still agree. possibilities. There's still a little bit more work to be done. And I, I think. Thanks, 
sir. Mr. McLaughlin, you have anything? We've heard a lot of good ideas on things. Again, there was a lot of efforts put in by a number of people last year to be able to try and keep the loss down as low as possible. I thought you did a wonderful job. We talked about it closing early and so forth. It should close early. If it's a nasty day, no one's going to come. Close it down at that point. You have to keep the cost down. The point of it is when we put in $50,000 a year, mark $50,000. What you have to understand is we're also going to have income coming in for that period of time. So if the income is $45,000 a year, mark $50,000, then that's where you get your loss of $5,000. So again, uh, things to do in New Palau. They're few and far between. John Minister mentioned a lot of them, but he also mentioned he met his wife there, his children were there. Uh, Mr. Reynolds said that he used to be there as a kid all the time. That's what we're offering. We're offering entertainment for families, for young families, for the children. And as Mr. Uh, Lowry said, we have all these parks that cost us money. Everything costs money, no doubt about it. There's a lot of effort put in by people on more than willing to go forward again this year to see what happens. We break even. We'll have a lot of that. be wonderful. We have a good year, a hot year. It'll be used even more. So I hope we're opening up. If we lose a significant amount of money, now what that significant amount is, we don't know. It's $10,000, $15,000, whatever. Then we have to look at it again. I would probably say it's time to close it down. Thank you. Good job. I believe we owe it to the citizens of New Carolina, each and every one of them. Are. Some of them are going to come to the next one. But they probably have children and they have children. I want to see people in that country. I want to do it. I want to do it. However, that means to see it. Colleen, last year, did you not every month come to the pool and tell them to do it more? Because for a long time, was it not around $10,000? Did you come to the pool and tell them to do it more? Did you come to the pool and tell Yes, because most of the revenue we get when the pool starts up, the memberships, um, and then the, as the expenses go on with the wages and the supplies, and then if something would break. Um, towards the end, we, we catch up with some more of the expenditures, the electric, the, you know, the heat and cold. So, yes. So, so it's going to always look good. We probably wouldn't get a heads up until you're, you're past your, your season. I mean, but, but yes, monitor it monthly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we owe it to the younger people. And we have to offer something. Other names, parts that you're not allowed to walk in, parts that there's no road sticking in, and you can cut grass down so people can speak that way because they don't want to walk in the back of the truck. Okay? So if that's not enough to park, I'm going to send you to the state park and close it down to you. And there's food to play in. And I have had a lot of money to do this. I've been done with some clothing that constantly hand me stuff to you. Why don't you arrest it? I can drive down down Avenue and live out that way. Some calls in there later at night and I'll come home. You know, shut it down. Keep it down. Just keep it cool. But let's keep an eye on it every month. Call in the next year. You know, as we did next year. So if we see you instead of a $10,000 profit, we're going to do this. I'm just going to follow on this with no disrespect to you. We do not have a drug problem in our parks. Our boats don't sleep in it. Please visit our parks. Go ahead. Hi, hi, Mr. Well, we're on YouTube, and Lord knows who is watching. Oh, so I mean, we want to give our best. We're on YouTube, right? We're going to tell the truth. I don't think our parks are I mean, I am YouTube, and I don't think our parks are in our parks. I don't think our parks are in our parks. I don't think our parks are in our parks. This year, uh, last part of last year, uh, people do control the parks. And from time to time, we do have issues with homeless people. We have had people up there with drugs. So our parks are still safe. Absolutely. Okay. We got two here, and then since we did ask so many people to bring uh, their thoughts and opinions on this, I think these two have 
a comment, quick comments. I'm hoping yeah. there's a couple of people out here that want to speak. I want to let I want to get them in as well. So, Mr. Reynolds. Um, <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were going first. So, <laughs> no, um, I think I totally agree with Mr. Lowry on looking at it and maybe possibly closing it down if it's not making money midsummer or whenever. I'm up for a compromise. I think compromise is good. Consensus building in the sake of consensus building is not, but compromise is. I think that if we were to rearrange the motion to look at it and say if it is losing money, close it down, but if it's not, keep it open. I think if we were to reward the motion, then I could come on board and vote yes. Because I, I, I think here's, compromise here's, is a good thing. And I, I, and I, I, I like that, but here's the deal. You're going to invest all this money to open it. All right, it's not going to make money. Then you're going to close it. Then all the lifeguards are done. And then we get a heat wave of three weeks of 90 degree weather. It, to me, if you're going to open it, you got to see it through to the end. That's just a waste of money. If you're going to have that, you might as well not open it. Well, I think that if we're... I mean, I love if, if we lost if we, if we lost, thing, if we really lost twenty thousand dollars mid mid year, then it's time to let it go. And, and, but if we but if we made twenty thousand dollars mid year, let's keep it going. I mean, I, I think that compromise is a good what, thing. And I what's going to happen to the pool passes? We're going to refund half the pool passes to people who now can't use them for the full year. I mean, it's that how much is, how much do we generate enough pool pass? How, how much are we losing? Yeah. The question yeah. the question comes is how much have we lost? Yeah, that's. But remember, I, remember, Colin. I think if I heard you right. Said that you wouldn't know. I mean, he's losing that's money true. until probably yeah. after the season. Is so, I love the out of box thing. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great you all up here coming. We all know this is a hot topic. I mean, oh, it's, it's a very sensitive issue. And I love to see you guys, even though you have dissenting opinions, you're working together to try to find that common goal. And that's awesome. But I just don't think that plan is very useful. Yeah. With the unknown towards the end. But, Questions thank you, sir. quick. Mr. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Again, this is such a hot topic. And yeah. When I was a kid, I, I swam in a, it wasn't a city pool, but it was a privately owned pool that was open to the public. Uh, both of them are now closed. But uh, I want, can I address Mr. Craybucker? Yes, sir. You, he, you made a comment about, you know, it's nothing for businesses to lose five, ten thousand dollars whatever, you know. It's a five thousand. Okay, five thousand. Uh, I don't consider the city a business. I consider every dime that this city has is taxpayers' money. It's, it's somebody else's money. It's, if, if I lose $5,000 in my business, which I lost more than that this year, that comes out of my pocket. It ain't coming out of everybody else's pocket. So I, I kind of hate to look at the city and the pool as a business because I don't think it is. I know you, you may not agree with me, and that's fine. The other thing on the pool, if, if we open this pool, and although I like what Ethan says, I like what Mr. Lowry says, the, if we open this pool, we can't close it mid-season. And we won't know until probably October, November, it, how much money we lost. Or May. Or May, correct. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's always a possibility we're going to make money off of it. Although the record of it doesn't show that. And, and you have to look at past performances. But again, it did not lose as much last year as it did the year before. It already lost 5,300 bucks. And that's contributed to you and whatever other council members went up there. I, I don't know who, who pitched in. You know, I don't know what the manager did. I don't know what Mrs. Lowry did out there at the pool. You know, the. I just, it, it's just, it's spending taxpayers' money, and I think all of us has to be better stewards of taxpayer money. Now, if we open this thing in, in, in July, we see that, okay, we're 20 grand in the hole. Legally, I don't think we can close it because we have pool passes out there. We have to keep it open the entire season if we open this pool and we lose 20 grand in two months. Again, it, it's, it's just figures I'm pulling. I hope we don't lose money. I would love for it to make a dollar. I would be ecstatic if it broke even, if it didn't cost us a dime, that it could support itself. And then I'd 100% I'd in favor of it. But, you know, uh, I, I can't equate the pool with the parks. I, I really can't. It's just like apples to oranges in my mind. I, that's all I got to say. I just, and just to follow I mean, up, let me, and, and again, on my opinion to what you're saying, and I look at the city's tax dollars, but no one else is asking us to close a park. No one's asking us to stop going streets. 
I mean, everybody uses different things. In well, the, in the, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Every, <laughs> we'll move on. Let's move yeah. on. That's good. Everybody if anybody in the screen. audience has any comments on the pool only, we'll take those questions now. Mr. Cobb. Five minutes. Huh? Five minutes, sir. It's getting late. It's not What's that? Hey, <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you in a hypothetical auto cop 202 bill drive. Hypothetical situation. Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kinko, you might have to answer this. If something goes down at the wastewater treatment plant, where's the money come to get it back up? It's going to come out of the general fund, or we're going to take loans out. And Does that loan? come out of the general fund, or do you have to borrow the money? We, if the general fund can supplement any any other funds we have. Now, for example, a hundred thousand dollar part breaks an old plant, or a sixty thousand dollar part breaks. Bending balance and enterprise fund for water is like thirty-five thousand dollars. You know, so we're going to have to take out a loan, or have the general fund pay for that piece. If we end up taking out a loan, that debt service is going to be passed on to the citizens. They're going to see increased rates based off that one loan we have to take out to replace. Well, that's the same thing for water plant. Same situation, for sure. Uh, because the waste water treatment plant, 74, 75 was the last major construction on that. On the what? The waste, the water, waste water, water treatment plant. plant. I think it was like an 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was 80s, but you're around that time. Yeah. Water yeah. treatment was about 10 years ago, if I'm not wrong. Newer. That's in way better shape structurally. And they're all outdated anyway. Sure. But that's what I'm asking you to take consideration. Where are you going to get the money if something bad, if something does go wrong at the water plant, waste water treatment plant? If we had three hundred thousand dollars in our general fund, like if we had our estimated balance for end of this year is going to be three hundred and thirty something, three sixty something around there. If we had that in the bank, I would be a little more comfortable saying, "Yeah, go next year." You know, open it up. But for one hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars in general fund for a city, it's pretty bad. I mean, if we're going in the right direction. But it's not a lot of money for a city. I know, I, I probably know a person who has more money in their bank account than the city of New Carlisle, you know, in the general fund. So, like I said, when I look at it, I look at it strictly from a financial standpoint, you know, and that's my, that's, that's where I'm What a, <clears throat> one other thing, please. I owe the council, fire chief, fire department, and the city manager an apology for getting irate a few, a few weeks back. I apologize for that. I should not have done it. I'd like to set up a meeting with Mr. Bridge and the fire chief to have some discussions if possible. Absolutely. I want to try to work with you. That's good. I will accept it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anybody else in the audience? I will say this. It takes more of a man to apologize to do the act. Perhaps I'll see you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else in the audience? On the pool. <laughs> Mr. Lowry, you got 20 Gentlemen, seconds. Every councilman here, let's all of us go down and spend some time at that pool this year. I'll volunteer, volunteer 24 hours. Probably more, but I'll do 24 hours to say this thing we're going to do before. Good, that's good. Before you go on to the vote, again, we have one more piece of information. I told Mr. <coughs> my, my, my Mayor Lowry about this. There are some issues with the number of guards that we had possible. Mr. Kicker, we're going to play that. Number of what? The number of lifeguards that we have on staff. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the ODH, Ohio Department of Health, they do the rules and regulations of our municipal pool. Um, over, the, uh, over the past couple years, um, when we are at probably our minimum um, staffing, uh, our pool was listed in there where there was a detailed plan had to be submitted to the ODH because our pool is about 8,000 square feet. I didn't, I didn't feel that our pool was that big, but after Dayton Pool Management was there, actually our pool is 2,000 square feet larger than uh, Tip Springfield's pool. Uh, so he brought to my attention uh, to look into a couple more paragraphs into the, uh, the ODH's rules. Um, minimum staffing rules, uh, and, I, and I'm not saying that we weren't meeting them, we were skirting the possible edges of having minimum staffing. I'm not saying that will drive costs up. But we, it's possible that we will have to keep an extra guard on that we may have normally sent home on lower um, staffing issues or um, weather related. So um, I did read in here, uh, for instance, someone gets on the diving board. There will be a guard for that board even if there's one person on it. If there's 10 people on the other side, you will have another guard. 
and then you have another guard on uh, standby. It is easier to have guards there on the clock ready to work than to have the minimum staffing at the start. Let's say it looks kind of dreary. You say, you know, I'm only going to bring one guard in. I got five kids uh, coming in. Then to try and call two or three extra guards in if all of a sudden it gets clear and we get 75 people coming in. I think having the, the staffing there at the beginning, three or four guards in their manager, and or one or two of the, um, well, we have to start the day out with uh, the front desk and the uh, concession. So you have to start with that and then call people off if you don't need them. Mm -hmm. But starting lower to help that conserve that money um, really uh, was something that I saw in the rules and regs. It kind of prohibits us a little bit in this. So I was, um, I actually talked with the day and pool manager because we thought it was about one per 25 guards, which it is kind of net average, up to a 6,000 square foot pool. Ours is eight. So um, I have the rules um, and regulations that ODH regulates. I had nothing to do with City of New Carlisle, um, but I wanted to bring those up because actually I just learned a little bit about those myself. Thank you. Randy, I had a question before we move forward with this motion. Does it need to be altered as far as two motion is made to open the pool with or without, or does that need to be separate? That's separate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, no further discussion. June. You can call for a vote, sir. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Mike Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Passes five to two. Thank you, sir. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> All right, now the next uh, item on here is actually a quote from Dayton Pool Management Company. Um, on February 10th of 2016, myself, Mr. Kiko, and Mr. Uh, Mayor Mike Lowry met with Dayton Pool Management Company, learned a lot of good facts from the pool. One of the things said it's not as bad shape as I thought it was. However, they did, we did want to quote, and basically what this is, this would be for them to come in and manage. Now, there's a few downsides of this, in my personal opinion. My recommendation is for council not to approve this. Um, one, the cost. They went $65,000 per manager in rotation and $75,000 per manager out of rotation. Now, we do retain all our profits, but we're not going to bring in that much money, so we're going to come out of loss. And also, another key component of that is we don't staff it. So the seasoned veterans that we had coming back would have to go through their application and hire process. We also lose control over any kind of special events we want to do. So if we wanted to have a free night for the citizens to come use the pool, not happening. You know, so we lose a lot of that controlling aspect if council decides to go with this. Again, my recommendation is for you guys to not go with it. You need a motion on that, correct? You need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowe. Oh, yeah. I think he was gonna make the motion. Uh, but yes. I make a motion Excellent. that we do not accept this contract or this offer. Second. Yeah. Whatever this thing's supposed to be. Second by Mr. Reynolds. Yeah. Can I say something? Mr. Craig Um This was kind of my idea. <laughs> yes. It was. Thanks it was. For, it was. Thanks for the time. No. It, 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 no. It, it but, a lot from it. but. We did learn a lot. We did. Yeah, and that's what I wanted us to do. But however, I, you know, I was trying to think out of the box, how can we keep this pool open and how can we, you know, get out from underneath it financially? How can we, all those how can we? That's what the idea of that was. Sure. But it ended up that you met somebody, a good advisor, a good counselor that knows the pools. He sure knew his pools, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. He so. did. He was very informative. Mr. Reynolds. Even though I did just vote no on opening the pool, I think this would have been a terrible idea because I think Valerie can handle herself and she does a very good job already. Uh, and I think that this would I mean $69,000 is what we pay. It's 9000 more than what we yeah. would uh, allocate. So, uh, And I think having local control is super, super important. And I don't think we need uh, people in Dayton telling us how to run our pool because it's not really how it works. So. Mr. McIntyre. 
Um, when uh, last last year, when the pool discussion came up, there was a lot of talk on whether or not we could get an outside company to manage the pool or buy the pool. Um, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Mr. Kraybacher. Uh, for taking the initiative and looking into this. I mean, some, I think some other councilmen uh, helped out as well. I know uh, Mr. Bridge helped out as well. But John really led the effort to look into this to see if it's feasible. Um, economically, it's not. It would cost more for us to go this route than it would uh, just to run it ourselves. Um, but I want to thank you for all the work you did. And then second of all, just to clarify, I believe Mr. Lindsay made the motion to reject the offer. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. So <laughs> you, yeah, so you would be voting yeah, yes if you want to reject it. Great, yes. thank you. I was going to reread the motion. Do you have a question? Uh, comment, I guess, Mr. Lindsay. On, the, on my motion, I would prefer to say reject instead of not accept. Uh, I'm still new at this. So. For clarification, for good move, sir. Good move. Mr. Okay. McIntyre. <laughs> yeah. Gene, before you call for the vote real quick, and I know we're all tired and full, we want to get home, but and correct me on some of this if I'm wrong. When the day the pool management was there, they were talking. We were talking about what kind of shape our pool was in. And I said, and he said, there's some new pools that are worse than yours. And I believe it was Beaver Creek? Fairfield. Fairfield, and it was leaking 80,000 a day? They had that pool for almost 14 years and realized where they came from. And it came from the other side lining. It had metal screws up. But the, it, was spot, it was spot welded. Yeah, spot But anyways, welded. it was leaking roughly 80,000 gallons a day for like 15 years before they found it. So, I mean, our little four thousand dollars or four thousand gallons were looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pretty good too. And another thing, he actually gave some advice on how to check for a leak in our own pool. Apparently, in the deep end, there's this pipe that goes into the ground to release water from underneath when the pool's empty. But more importantly, when the pool pool's full of water, there's a flap that goes down and the pressure from the water holds it closed. But there's a small stick in there that just prevents it from closing all the way. You know, there's a lot of water that way too. So we'll be checking that, and that's something that physically, once the pool's full, somebody has to dive in and check to see that pipe. So, again, learned a lot from the pool management company. Absolutely did. Good to know. Let's call for the vote. Once again, once again, a reminder, a yes vote means you want to reject the proposal. The date for the yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Rick Lauer. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mr. Mike Lauer. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Passes seven to zero to reject. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Mr. Bridge? Is that the end of your report, sir? No, I got a few more bullet items to get through, Mr. All right. Mayor. I'll just go through them real quick. After shooting trainer, uh, active shooter training for city employees, council members. I did have a meeting on um, February 10th. Um, tentative date I set aside is Friday, April 22nd, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. here at the Smith Park Shelter House. I will, in the next month or so, bring a motion to you guys to close the city operations down for those uh, for that time frame. Council is invited to go with that. Um, it, the training can be applied to any building that you're in. So our water folks or our wastewater folks can actually come here, and even though it's not in their building, they can take away from the lessons they learn and apply it down there. Um, I think that in today's age, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I think it's a good idea um, just to have that experience. If, God forbid, something does happen under that stature, we could have, we'll be better equipped to uh, handle the situation. And then moving on, um, I know I'd sent out an email to council members uh, in regard to an email we had got from a, uh, one of the staff members at the Clark County Sheriff's Office in regards to additional costs for equipment and supplies. I had a meeting with uh, Sheriff Kelly, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mike Lowry, and uh, Con uh, Councilman Lowell McLaughlin. <laughs> I still want to say Mayor McLaughlin when I look at him, so I, I do apologize. Uh, so anyway, I think that email just went out as a mistake, and there will be no additional charges for the equipment and for supplies this year. So that's a, that was a good, good outcome of that meeting. And also, Kevin White, he's a candidate for the United States Congress, uh, Ohio District 8. He was actually supposed to be here tonight under communications, but he did get scheduled for uh, a conflicting event. But he did want me to mention um, that he is, will be having a uh, meet and greet on Saturday, March 12th, 
and that's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and it's at the Homestead Feed and Supply at 1883 North Dayton Lakeview Road and he actually owns that business as well. If you have not had a minute to stop into that feed store, please do. His prices are extremely competitive. I feed my dog Blue Buffalo a Pet Supplies Plus at $65, $70 a bag. I can get it there for around $40 or $45. So he does uh, have extremely competitive pricing. Just stop in and see him. And I do believe that's all I have for my city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Uh, now we will move on to comments from the audience on any topic now. You ain't got nothing else. I'm disappointed. Nothing? You can scale. make something. Nothing? You need to scale it back. <laughs> all right, anybody else? <laughs> all right. Uh, to resolutions, none tonight. We'll move on to the ordinances. Mr. Collier. Ordinance 16-07, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance establishing compensation rates for certain management personnel. Council. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I move that we accept ordinance 1607. Second. Second. And next, I of this ordinance, as we stated earlier, I got two employees here who definitely deserve this raise. How it works out, our hourly employees are unionized, so no matter what the budget looks like, they are guaranteed their step increase year in and year out. Whereas, who gets the short change is management. If there's no money in the budget, we don't get a raise. You know, um, I am not asking for a raise myself under this ordinance because I just got a hefty one from going from my position to the current position I'm now. However, right beside me are two individuals who care deeply about the city and its operations. If they did not, they still, quite frankly, would not be here. Um, management in the city has is, is historically have been underpaid when it comes to other positions, uh, similar positions in other municipalities. Um, I know a lot of people just see the 1.2% and then the 3.6% on a dollar figure. Mr. Kicker said to receive less than $600 on the year, and then Ms. Harris, going off the top of my head, maybe under 2000 Do you have those numbers when I gave them to you by chance? On my desk. It was very minimal <laughs> yes. overall cost between what the actual dollar amount going to cost. So, uh, again, a lot of hours put in, a lot of dedication. Um, both of them thoroughly deserve it since they haven't had raises. And I've never had one. Ms. Harris has never had a raise since she's been here. And then Mr. Kicko got Two one and three. And, and 14. And 14. So it's been, been some time. Mr. McIntyre. Um, yeah, I have a, a question and then two comments. Um, Mr. Bridge sort of got into it then with his last statement, but the conversation was a bit muddy. Um, I want to, to ask you, uh, each of you, um, how long you've been working for the city and when was the last time you received a raise? And then, I'll, and then I have my comments, um, if roughly. In the, in the, I've been working with the city since uh, April, March of 2000 in this position since um, uh, November of 2007. And in the last three years, I had a raise in 2014. In 2014. Yes. Which is a 2.4 percent. How this works, how the union agreement works. Our union agreements are done for a three year period. Well, what the union employees will do is say, all right, we get this amount of raise, and it maybe it could be 20 or 25 cents per year per step. Um, then they'll come back and cap how much the management can get. So basically, you're looking at over a course of a three-year period, based off the last union contract, which these percentages will probably go down since they're not, get, they're not getting much of a raise coming moving forward. But speaking from 2015 to 2015, that agreement called for the managers over that three-year period not to get more than a 3.6% raise in three years. That's not even cost of inflation if you do point year, you know? But the union won't take that out because years passed, they have been told before they were unionized, no money for raises for the employees, but yet managers got a raise. So what this does is create a problem, you know? Um, they, we're here right now. Ms. Harris deserves way more than 3.6%, quite frankly. Way more, but because of that union contract, she can't get it. <coughs> Mr. Kicker is the same way. They're all under that same umbrella that the union contract goes under. Okay, thank you. Now, Ms. Harris, um, how long did you, how long have you worked here and when was the last time you received a raise? I started uh, March 29th, two years ago. It'll be two years next month. Years. And I've never received a never. raise. So, and actually, I never asked for it last year. None of us did because of right. the budget. Um, so. Okay, so 2014 okay. as well is when, that's when you started. Um, something interesting to bring up, this, this 
two points here. For Ms. Harris, there's been a couple times when I've come into the city building at really odd hours to pick up our packet. For, for council, our packets, what, what happens is Mr. Bridge and Mr. Collier, whoever it somehow <laughs> happens, we get all of our information for, for the council meeting put into our mailbox and we can go and get it before the meeting, have time to go through the legislation, read it, um, come up with questions, come up with issues we want to discuss. And I come in at odd hours, Sunday mornings or on the weekends or late at night. And there's been a few times where Ms. Harris is there plugging away very diligently on a Sunday morning. I mean, my goodness, in getting the work done, it's just unbelievable work, work ethic, the amount of time that she puts in. So I want to thank you very much for that. Um, and Mr. Kiko, I know that you work in about every single department that we have here in the city of New Carlisle. What are all the different departments that you, you're involved with? I'm involved in them all because I'm a uh, water certified operator, so I uh, can operate the plant. Um, I'm experienced in all the back. I do main breaks when they need me, and I do all the project inspections. So that's where m most of my time is like the debut stuff like that. That's all my inspections, things like that. So all the brick and mortar things from streets to water to everything that physically makes a city exist, you have a hand in the doing speedway, that. The speedway, make sure they follow the rules, regs, yeah, anything. Brick and mortar, infrastructure. Okay. And he's also so, stepped up the police stuff this year for me as well. Right. All right, so I want to thank you for that. That's a lot of work. And Ms. Harris, I want to thank you for all the work that you do putting those extra hours. Um, does my questions and, and the comments I have. So I'll yield the floor. Mr. McLaughlin. I just want to thank both of you. Uh, I worked a lot closer with you the last couple of years, uh, especially with finance, finding out exactly where we were and why we were there and so forth. And I think Mr. Harris has done an outstanding job of bringing this city back from the brink, to be quite honest with you. She has put in tremendous hours. She deserves more of a raise than she's asking or we're able to give her at this time. Uh, so I, I think it's well warranted. Past due, to be quite honest. I didn't think she'd been here two years, but it's going to be two years instead of March. Good for you. God bless and all the best. Uh, Mr. Kitko, I, I think for the last couple of years you've stepped up and you've done a, a much better job. Uh, again, seeing you in that capacity, and I, I think it's well warranted with you also for your raise. And, uh, Thank you for all our work with it. Appreciate it. Mr. Lerner. What do you see? <laughs> Thank you. But I have a question. Each one of these employees, are they only or are they salary? With salary. Okay, then I got another question. I'm involved in the union. I help negotiate a local contract. In a national country. What on earth does our ring employees have to do with this work? That's right. They I do not understand that one I was. Me, me and you both. I mean, that's a whole different ball. I mean, he's not under their country. Neither one of them. Right. They can still dictate raises if it's signed and agreed. Um, at the last negotiation. Well, I disagree. If they're a union and they're not, they have no say so over their wages. Well, they do because they won't accept the union agreement that's in front of them if it's not on there. That's only because we were negotiating a lot of them to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's how it works is, is I, okay, for example, I can take that out. I can give it to them. They're like, we're not signing this. Simple as that. The very first meeting that we had with them, I said, we need to take this out. It's prohibited. But again, if they don't agree to that coming out, I mean, I don't want to get what I'm just saying. I do know where we're going to be. We're not going to be here. The union has nothing to do with it. If it's in the contract, somebody messed up somewhere. A long time ago. That should be never the first book. That definitely needs to be renegotiated. It's been in this last three-year contract. I don't know if it was in the one before. I don't think it was in the one before. Yeah, it's, it's been in there several years. Probably. But, Probably yeah, I, I didn't understand way back then. You and me both. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, uh, we had some conversation here on the union contract. Does council get to vote on that can contract before it goes into effect? Uh, yes, you do. Yes. Then so you get to prove the change if you don't prove the whole contract. So if that particular blurb is not being changed, then you're not going to vote on that. Yeah. My understanding of when Kim or previous city manager did it, they just put in front of you the changes from the last contract. As a memorandum of understanding, not really an ordinance. I, I understand. Hmm. 
Well, I'd like to put it to council then to follow up with when Mr. Lyrie said, uh, I also was a union rep and mm -hmm. negotiated things. And I, when you first told me that was in there, you know what I said. I think that if that is in there, this council should reject that contract and any changes in that contract. Is council going to be prepared when are they allowed to strike? No, they're not allowed to strike. They're city work, they're city, they're government workers. They're not allowed to strike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. No. Collier. May I make a comment? As clerk, I, we're in pretty dangerous territory here talking about the union contract. And you remarked for the stop right That's not about this. Yes. Thank you. Getting, getting kind of way off the path. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Um, uh, I'll, real quick, <coughs> Allie, uh, <laughs> I hope you guys didn't take what I asked for about you guys not getting or getting the raise versus the pool. I knew you guys work your tails off. I see you guys always out there. Uh, you're always like eating your lunch while you're in the middle of digging a hole or something. So <laughs> thank you for everything you do. And Colleen, you're, you're, you're great too. So I appreciate you guys. So, Mr. Palmer. You ready? You're the man. Let's do it. Mr. Oh, Mr. Mayor Mike Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. I just want to thank you both for the work you do. Um, yes. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. Absolutely. Mayor McLaughlin. I'll say absolutely also and they definitely deserve. It. Thank you again for all your hard work. Mr. Cravo. Yes. Passes. Five to two. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> no, no, what we just voted on first. Oh, okay. Go ahead, sir. I voted no on the pool because I don't think the city has the money to operate this. I don't think the the budget is healthy enough really to do anything that we absolutely don't have to do. I voted no on your raises. It's nothing against you guys. I honestly believe you need the raises. You deserve the raises. But from a financial standpoint, I cannot justify voting yes for that. It, however, it did pass. I agree with the rest of the council. I see Ms. Harris's car in there and lights on all hours, day and night. Uh, I don't see Howie quite as much as I used to because I'm not out and about during the daytime as much. But I just wanted to kind of clarify why I voted the way I did. It, uh, you know, maybe another year or two, when, when will they be eligible for another raise, Mr. Bridge? They're eligible every year, just they can't go over that percentage amount given the three-year term of the contract. So we have a new contract coming up like soon? Mm, hopefully. Okay. So then in another year or two they could get another they could get another raise, correct? If the budget's looking okay. That's what I'm saying, if the budget looks okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in my mind right now I don't think the budget's that healthy. I mean, you know, if we have a major catastrophe at the sewer plant and or water plant, you know, we gotta borrow money. I am definitely against borrowing money. Sure. But we have to keep those two things operating. But here's, here's the deal, and I, I, I completely respect your opinion. The last thing you want to cut is your personal wages. Because here's, you're, you're going to cut, you're going to cut. Then you're going to lose somebody with a lot, tons of years of experience, tons of years experience. They're going to replace it for someone who has zero experience. Right. They're going to pay lesser, but then the quality of work is definitely going to suffer. So when you look at cutting things, I think your personnel is probably the last thing you want to do. You want to keep your people happy. You want to keep your people happy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's, and maybe in a couple of years we can, I can vote sure. yes on it. Let's move on, Mr. Collier. Would you uh, continue on with the ordinances, please? The next two ordinances are introductions. Uh, ordinance 16-09, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 3716. An ordinance amending ordinance 1414 regarding the agreement with Miami Valley Lighting LLC for street lighting services for use on public grounds and streets in the city of New Carlisle. Ordinance 16-10 introduction tonight public hearing and action on 3716. 
an ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2016. All I have here. Would you go ahead and continue with the other business, please? Sure. Under other business, there will be a crime watch meeting Wednesday, March 9th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, February the 29th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. That's hosted by the New Carolina City Council. And for those citizens who do not know, that's the New Carolina City Council. When it comes to school board, Bethel Township trustees, and Clark County commissioners all attend that meeting. Correct. Did I miss anybody? Like the official. Yeah, it is open to the public. And uh, as we've been advertising, the annual town hall meeting will be Monday, March 21st, at here at Smith Park Shelter House. The council meeting that night will start at 6.30 p.m. And the town hall meeting will start around 7.15, 7, 7 p.m. or directly after the council meeting. And that also is open to the public. We invite anybody who may want to come. That's all I have there. Before we wrap up tonight, I just want to thank council, city manager, Mr. Kitko, and all the uh, members of the audience for the, the in-depth conversation on the pool. I know it's a touchy situation for all of us, but I think tonight we, we all discussed it pretty much uh, very you know, thorough and professional. So I want to thank you guys. So, uh, with that said, anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I move.